Welcome to the Nutramedical Report live for <clears throat> Tuesday, the 26th of June. Going to get some water here. And we have Mike Velarde on the program. Michael Velarde, you're a tax IRS expert. You actually save people a lot of money. You're an expert also on the latest on the financial effects of what the Obamacare bill will be, the Affordable Care Act, which is going to have a Supreme Court ruling. We've heard from some of our experts who suggest that the uh, mandate is the only part that will be struck down. Uh, this is going to be very devastating in terms of the tax consequences of this bill and the destruction of the middle class. It appears that Obama can't win on the economy, so he's going to try to win the election by doing class and race warfare. It's very, very destructive uh, policies that he's trying to bring into place. Let's go through the uh, Affordable Care Act and the tax consequences in 2013, what it'll do. Well, it's anything but affordable. Um, And we're going to go through the the 10 most detrimental taxes that are in the bill. Um, let, let me start with number one, and, and this one's going to affect a lot of people. It's called the um, the hospital insurance tax. And everything begins in 2013, and of course, for good reason, it's after the election. So if he wins, then he could, you know, change some of these things. If he loses, then Romney, the new president who comes in, is stuck with these these taxes that are going to absolutely destroy the economy in 2013 and beyond. So, yeah. beginning in 2013, Obamacare increases the health the hospital insurance portion of the payroll tax from 2.9% to 3.8%. So that's almost a full percentage increase for families that are earning more than 250,000 a year. And for single filers earning more than two hundred thousand dollars annually. Now, this increased uh, hospital insurance tax is also applied to investment income for the first time. So the three point eight percent surtax on investment income is the most economically damaging in Obamacare. Wow. And yeah, it's it's and so so you know you're going to get this almost four percent tax on any stocks you sell, any investment property you sell, any any asset, basically. And also, uh, I think there's also a tax even on the sale of houses and mortgages, which is going to further kill housing. That's that's the Medicare tax. That's just 3.8% Medicare tax. That goes on on homes. So if you have a home that's a half a million dollars or a quarter million dollars, that's a giant hit to uh, to the real estate industry, too, isn't it? Right, and, and what, what they did in this bill was they never indexed it for inflation. So basically, you know, 10 years from now, as, you know, inflation increases, more and more people will get stuck paying this tax. Wow. That's... So, so, that's what, so that's what happened. So, um, it, and the tax increase amounts to about $210 billion between 2013 and 200, 2019 for the government. Um, and, of course, it's really going to kill the economy. I mean, that's what a lot of these taxes are going to do. I mean, they're going to take, it takes money out of the people's hands, gives it back to the government to fund this health insurance catastrophe that we have. Because as we go through it, I mean, this this plan was set up really to increase costs and not lower them. And as I start talking about... The, by increasing, the other, uh, who's going to get a key bono, as they say in uh, Latin? Uh, who's going to benefit from increasing costs? Is it the drug companies, the insurance companies, or is it just going to be the, a, a temporary thing? Well, what's going to happen? Because it looks to me like it's going to decimate health care provider clinics, uh, yeah. health networks, the doctor's offices, uh, specialty trauma centers. Right. All kinds of areas are going to literally be wiped out financially by this uh, situation. Yeah, well, the only one that's really going to benefit is the government. The, the government is going to, because what, what, what the plan is really to put people in a public option. Right. In other words, they're going to destroy regular public private insurance. So yeah. the only thing left after, say, two or three years of this will be the public option. Regular insurance will either be unaffordable or so uh, destroyed by the financial uh, cutbacks that uh, they won't exist. That's correct. That's exactly how this thing is, is designed. Yeah. Um, I mean, I mean, you know, we start with that 3.8% tax, and then number two, the mandate penalties. In 2014, Obamacare's individual and employer mandates go into effect, forcing individuals to purchase coverage and employees to offer 
coverage to their workers. The penalties paid in association with these mandates are estimated to be about $65 billion. Now, now here's what's going to happen. They tasked the Internal Revenue Service with collecting this tax. If you do not have health insurance in 2014, the IRS is going to send you a bill for $750. Now, supposedly, they're not allowed to tax you interest or hit any kind of penalties along with that. So it's going to be a straight $750 bill. Um, but, of course, if you get a refund or, you know, you have other money coming to you via the government, they'll, they'll take that to pay, this, to pay this bill. You know, that's right. what they'll do. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to mean that the IRS is going to have to hire more employees. They're going to have a bigger, stronger IRS to, to go after these mandates. Um, people who already are poor and can't afford health insurance get stuck with, it, with an extra bill that they, they can't afford to pay. And they'll be getting no refunds if they did have a refund coming. Right. And then, and then what's going to happen is the employers, small businesses like, like myself, my company, you know, a couple employees, are going to be forced to buy health insurance for all the employees. With the, of course, Which, the cost of health insurance has already risen since they put Obamacare in. In anticipation, it's risen to about 33% on average, between 25 and 35%. So as a result, we're going to start seeing insurance rates go even higher. Well, wait until I get to these other taxes, and you're going to see exactly how insurance rates are going to be forced higher by Obamacare. Right. Oh, boy. I mean, okay. if, if this thing, Dr. Bill, if this thing is not, if the Supreme Court does not strike this thing down in, its totali in totality on Thursday, th this country is in big trouble. This is probably the single worst piece of legislation since uh, 1913 when they passed the income tax. Well, maybe that's what it's designed to be, is actually a demolition. We had the demolition of the World Trade Center uh, in, yep. uh, 11 years ago, and I think this is the, we call him, let's call him the demolition president. Uh, he's here to demolish the economy. He's here to demolish health care. He's here to force people into a, a, a single-payer control, government-controlled system without any private care at all. Uh, and destroy the system where you have twice the survival rate of any socialist country like France or Canada or Australia or New Zealand. If you get sick in America and you have a serious health condition, you have twice the chance of survival. That's going to be gone. Yes. And, of course, everybody 75 yes. or older, even if you have private insurance, will be sent to an ethics committee to decide whether you get a clipped aneurysm in your head, a coronary artery bypass surgery, chemotherapy, or dialysis. Uh, if you're 75, they push the delete button. And then, of course, wow. the report just came out a few days ago that 29% of the people that die in Britain down what's called the Liverpool Pathway. The Liverpool Pathway is where they don't give you food, water, antibiotics, or any active medical treatment. And they say now, the doctors, this doctor has come out, a very senior internist doctor, that 29% of the people that die in Britain are actually murdered by their doctors and their nurses in hospitals by putting them through the Liverpool Pathway, which is dehydrate people, which is the most horrifying way to die. The most horrifying way to die, number one, is dehydration and starvation secondly uh the next the most is to suffocate and third is pain but the worst way to die is starvation and dehydration they actually do it to 29 percent of the people that die in britain are literally terminated by the liver pool pathway and they do it in, in canada as well and other socialist countries like australia and new zealand the same thing goes across europe so that's what they have coming here and obama wants euthanasia on steroids he wants abortion on steroids and he now he wants euthanasia on steroids with your doctor now white coated spit snots terminator uh, basically under government edict and if you don't follow these certain pathways and ethics committees the doctors and nurses will be delicensed and lose their job which in the future will only be through the government because private insurance and private uh, offices will be a thing of the past wow yeah that's pretty frightening that's what's coming and people who think that uh, that were conspiracy theorists those as I said yesterday uh, with a fire axe driving holes in the bottom of the boat while everybody else is screaming, stop dropping uh, the axe through the bottom of the boat, we need to grab the person with the axe and say, it's not okay to think that Obama has done something wonderful or Obamacare is great. It's horrifying. Is your whole health constantly challenged? 
Would you like to age less? Then consider taking Ageless Chocolate and Life Support from NutraMedical.com. Ageless Chocolate is a clinically validated, all-natural, fructose-free formula comprised of ingredients to promote overall gastrointestinal health and optimize the body's ability to detoxify harmful substances. In short, it will make you age less. Take Ageless Chocolate together with Life Support from Dr. Bill Deagle's NutraMedical.com. Life Support contains metabolically activated nutrients and detoxification cofactors that support stem cell rejuvenation, metabolism, gastrointestinal health, and anti-inflammatory pathways. Learn more and order Ageless and Life Support online at NutraMedical.com or call 888-212-8871. That's 888-212-8871. Or go to NutraMedical.com, spelled N-U-T-R-I medical.com nutramedical.com bringing nutrition and medicine together gold isn't for you ted anderson president of midas resources one of the world's premier gold and precious metal investing firms i get it you wouldn't buy gold if you believed that the government is doing a great job that the fed will stop handing out trillions of dollars like bailout candy that social security would be there for you that's not what's happening you might even pass on gold if the stimulus package wouldn't fuel inflation or that the dollar wouldn't lose value or that your retirement would be secure if all looks rosy to you then now is not the time to buy gold For the realists, there have never been more sobering reasons to diversify with gold. Since 2001, the U.S. dollar index has tanked 30% while gold has risen 300%. Right now, savvy investors are adding gold to their portfolios. You should, too. Find out what they know. Call us and I'll send you 10 reasons why gold will do very well. Free. 800-686-2237. 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. When I hear about natural disasters and the danger of having no water, I'm not worried. Why? Because I have an Aquapod. Got it from MyPatriotSupply.com. The Aquapod Emergency Water Storage Kit comes with a pump and a huge 65-gallon bladder that easily fits in a standard bathtub, allowing a family of four a 14-day supply of safe, fresh water and at a much lower cost than bottled water. Made in the USA with BPA-free material, the Aquapod keeps water fresh for up to eight weeks. Just fill from your tub, then pump into jugs or bottles. The Aquapod is only $29.95, and when you buy two or more Aquapods at MyPatriotSupply.com, com you'll qualify for free shipping plus check out the survival seed vault with 20 seed varieties tattler canning lids the nation's only customizable long-term storable foods and much more at mypatriotsupply.com get stress-free shipping on all orders over 49 dollars call 866-229-0927 or visit mypatriotsupply.com for emergency preparedness self-reliance and food independence Iodine protection packs from HempUSA.org are now in stock for immediate delivery worldwide. Our iodine protection packs include micro plant powder, green life kelp, red palm oil, and our clear roll-on iodine that will feed the body the iodine it needs. All iodine protection packs are in stock, save you money, and ship for free in all 50 states. Visit HempUSA.org or call 908-691-2608 today. HempUSA.org has a revolutionary wonder food for detoxing the body and rebuilding the immune system. Micro plant powder can help unclog arteries and soften heart valves while removing heavy metals, virus, fungus, bacteria, and parasites. Plus, it cleans and purifies the blood, lungs, stomach, and colon. Keep your body clean with micro plant powder. Visit us at HempUSA.org or call 908-691-2608 today. America's number one source for independent talk radio for over a decade. We are the GCN Radio Network. Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report and Clay and Iron Show. And you're going to be seeing a lot more information on both Nutramedical and Clay and Iron. Um, uh, just to, to kind of step back a bit, uh, and people that listen to the program over a long period of time know that there's a constant thread through this program, bringing the best nutritional and wellness technologies, preparedness for uh, biological, chemical problems, nuclear issues such as Fukushima. Um, we want you to understand that there's a convergence of knowledge, both spirit knowledge that the Most High God has given in ancient times that are now converging to this day and hour, uh, it says in the book of Daniel, close up and seal the words to the time of the end. 
this is the time of the end, the end of not of the world, but the end of the aeon or age. Mm-hmm. And we can see that uh, the um, Federal Reserve System is actually designed to actually be finished next year, 2013. They want to replace it, and you can see it with them scrambling in Europe. This is a on-purpose demolition of the European economy with the uh, derivative swaps that they have. The and uh, the this situation, which is set up by George Soros and the Rothschild banks, the uh, situation with the banker boy in the White House, Mr. Obama, is designed specifically to trash the world economy. And Obamacare is integral. I was told this back in 1993. 1994, I mean, when I went to work for CECOM and the Virtual World Project was one of our black op projects, that they, when they bring in a, quote, national health care, which they told me would be around 2010, 2012, that they were going to have, as part of the biometric world currency system, your medical records would be on a microchip with a tracker ID chip that could be tracked up to two and a half miles away, and you'd be tracked right down to your GPS coordinates. Uh, and uh, this was the biblical mark of the beast. Um, people say, oh, that's ridiculous, Dr. Deagle. That's just conspiracy theory. No, it isn't. I had security clearance and actually was inside the actual array of the Cray Array, hundreds of supercomputer Cray 4 computers at Falcon, uh, Colorado, Shriver Air Force Base. The new facility being built in northern Utah is another node of this system. They have nodes at Whitehall, England. They have nodes in Jakarta, nodes in Beijing, China, and elsewhere around the world. They're all integrated into this one world system. And uh, what you're talking about is Obamacare fits in perfectly with the demolition of private property, the middle class, and the decimation of the nation states, which will be plunged into such massive debt and destruction of economies that the nation states will basically be vestigial. In other words, the idea of America will simply be a territory within a trading zone of a world global complex. A Earth, Inc., it would be the best term for it. Well, let me read, Dr. Bill, if you will, from the Obama health care bill as far as the chip that you just mentioned. It says this under Class 2, Paragraph 1, Section B, specifically includes a Class 2 device that is implantable. On page 1004, it describes the term data means in Paragraph 1, Section B. Right. In this paragraph, the, the term data refers to information respecting a device described in Paragraph 1, including claims data, patient survey data, standardized analytical files that allow for the pooling and analysis of data from disparate data environments, electronic health records, and any other data deemed appropriate by the secretary. So they can put anything in there. I mean, and they have um, what's called the CHIP program. Um, It stands for the Children's Health Insurance Program. And what would happen is if a, a child is born and does not have acceptable coverage. They'll be qualified and placed into the the Children's Health Insurance Program, a CHIP program, and um, they will be, uh, with the consent of the parent, be implanted with this CHIP from birth. Wow. That's uh, that's called the mark of the beast. Anybody wants to dispute it and says, Dr. Deagle, you're just exaggerating. I said, no, we're not. This is no longer a time when you can kind of, your, your spittle fold mouth, has to dry up now. It's time to start getting real. The reality is that we Christians are like the ancient Bereans or the sons of Issachar. We know, and like uh, King Babylon, uh, the Babylon Nebuchadnezzar, which means in Babylonian king of kings, which is a blasphemy against the creator God. We know because our God is the only God. Not the God of the Mormons or the God of the Muslims, the God of the Baha'i, the God of all these other fools. No, our God is is the only one true God, period. And our God have told us in the ancient scriptures and have told us in prophecies raised from Jesus' mouth himself what's going to happen. And I can tell you from my personal experiences, and I'm a skeptic. I mean, I'm like a Thomas. But when I shove my hand into the side of the wounds, if you want to call it, to see the actual coming of the mark of the beast, the actual financial destruction, I have the kind of mind that can actually conceive and understand these things and remember all the technologies I was exposed to, I can tell you, when you read the Obamacare bill, the Affordable Care Act, that's how euphemistic it is, we're looking literally at the face of a senior minion of hell himself in Obama, and I don't think we have a really much better situation with Romney. Uh, We have a situation with a person that depending on which way the wind blows, uh, his policies will blow. Uh, the Obamacare plan was actually based on Romney care. I mean, how can he do, fight against Obama coming up to this election? 
And he hasn't uh, marshaled the Christian right to a great extent. He's had some so-called leaders. But, you know, we need to see some action in terms of, of the real solid Christian Americans because the American rights were based on our Creator, not on the Constitution or even the Bill of Rights. They just acceded to the fact that our rights came from our Creator. And uh, these extra taxes aren't designed to actually build the economy or to try to shore up uh, services so everybody has access. They're designed to destroy the economy. They're designed to destroy America to the final step so that we have to accept a world banker-run global matrix system where your biometric currency is your retinal scan, your fingerprints, and your terahertz body scan at 200 yards on a telephone pole you don't even see uh, coming because they can actually strip search you from a distance. Well, frightening. It is. and that, People say, oh, no, we're just exaggerating. I said, no, we're not. I'm a rational doctor. I order tests. I tell people what to do in terms of logical things. I'm extremely logical. This is not something we're just making up. I was an actual employee, and in fact, I remember when I finished doing the examination of the Oklahoma City Special Op Forensics Team, and uh, months later, one of the guys on the team told me specifics uh, how they removed two unexploded U.S. Army Corps Engineer Micronukes Thermate RDX and High Explosive Cord, and months later, when he was drinking at a bar near uh, Fort Carson, and told some of his special forces buddies what had happened and they had been exposed to nuclear uh, materials that uh, he got court-martialed and they came to me and uh, threatened me and I said you're going to give me a great big five figures you're going to give me a letter of reference and as you come within 500 miles of me or my family you're not going to be getting to put up your socks in the morning I said that to my commander and the other people involved right in the boardroom and they looked at me like you're not Steagle I said I want the check tomorrow a letter of reference and I said if you come anywhere near me or my family you're going to die. Mm. And I meant it. And they looked at me like, uh-oh. Oh. Mm. And I say that out there, so that's why when I get death threats, you need to take it seriously. You threatened Eagle. You are in major trouble. <laughs> major trouble. I'm telling you, you wish the devil himself was after you rather than me. <laughs> well, this Obamacare is going to put everybody in trouble. I don't, that's all I could say. I mean, Oh, yeah. I mean, well, Obamacare will, will finally I mean, put the final crash on the U.S. economy and meld America with an emergency session, which I expect to come up shortly between either before or after the election, as they crash Europe, as they start a regional war in the Middle East, which they're trying desperately to do now with this down Syrian jet. They are trying desperately to meld America to Area 3 of the 10 Zones, 1973 Council on Foreign Relations Foreign Affairs Journal, the 10 Kings that they're talking about. Let's go through some more of these points. So, Michael, um, you mentioned 10 points when we first started this uh, uh, two segments ago. Let, let's run through those, uh, hit the high points of them, and then kind of ex expand them in terms of what the uh, quote, Affordable Care Plan, which is a most euphemistic, nasty piece of legislation, right. since the Federal Reserve Act of, 20, uh, two, of 1913. And, of course, I think that it will be the final pull-down. They say, when you heard the comments by uh, to bring down building number seven, to pull it, well, this is the pull-it bill to bring down America. It is. Well, let, let's recap. Uh, we went through the first four. The first one was the ha hospital insurance tax. That's a 3.8% Medicare tax, uh, basically, on, it, and, and ev uh, on everything from your house to your stocks and investments. And what they do is they, uh, they index it for the rich, in, in which they qualify as any family that makes over $250,000 a year, or any individual that makes over $200,000 is going to get stuck with that tax. Secondly was the mandate penalties that go into effect in 2014. If you don't have insurance, they will send you a bill for $750, um, and the IRS is tasked to enforce that. Thirdly, they have, starting in 2014, health insurance provider fees. It, uh, the Obamacare imposes an annual fee on health insurance providers based on each company's share of the total market. So your, the, the, your health insurance company is going to be forced to pay a tax, and these taxes are going to total about $60 billion between 2014 and 2019. Wow. Number four. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. Number four is the Cadillac tax. 
This begins in 2018. Obamacare puts a new 40% excise tax on Cadillac health plans. A Cadillac health plan is a health plan that costs more than $10,200 for an individual and more than $27,500 for families. And it's not indexed for inflation. In other words, so if you have a high health care plan because you have serious health problems in your family or pre-existing conditions, it will, in fact, tax you for pre-existing conditions. Yeah, or just as, as, as inflation goes, uh, once you get a decent health plan that's going to cost you about 1000 a month, 10000 you know, 1000 a month for a, a decent health plan for, is not that much, really. But right, but exactly. Gonna, you know, we, we spend know, more than that now for a fair excise tax. Right, yeah, exactly. Forty percent. So you're well, I'm a small business. My that. my my health insurance right now already is beyond that for my family. You know, and we don't uh, we don't even use drugs or anything like that. I don't go to the doctor. Uh, I take nutritionals. I work out. I do other things. And our family, I mean, the average family is going to get nailed with this tax, aren't they? Yes, exactly. Uh, absolutely. I mean, it's just a question of when. I mean, and that's what makes it so destructive. I mean, they, they, they have number five is a prescription drug fees. Um, since 2011, Obamacare has put an annual fee on manufacturers and importers of branded drugs based on each individual company's share of the total market. Um, this is, is, it results in a $27 billion tax increase between 2011 and 2019. Whoa. So now one of the reasons your drug costs are going to go up is because of the Obamacare tax. Uh, well, uh, no, that's no. kind of productive. What about the drug companies? Wouldn't you think they'd be up in arms over this? Yeah. Absolutely. A lot of them, by the way, manufacture their drugs in Mexico. I know we, when I worked for Occupational Medicine in Colorado Springs, we had companies in Colorado Springs that were packaging pills that were made in, in chemical factories outside Mexico City. They were being packaged and compressed into tablets in, in Colorado. They were then shipped to being put in packages made in Connecticut with the French English going up to Montreal to a warehouse and the rest going to upstate New York or out west, say, San Francisco for storage in warehouses. And then, of course, the federal government was trying to say that those pills were inferior when they're made on the same pill compression machines uh, done in Colorado after being manufactured at the same facility outside Mexico City. Yes, and, the, and, these the, and, these, and these are the ones that they're, they're taxing, the ones that are coming from Mexico, from Canada. Uh, well, almost all of them are now. So 85% right. plus of drugs, 85 to 90% of drugs are manufactured outside the United States now. Sometimes the pills are compressed here after they've been mass shipped here. A lot of the time they're already ready to go just into packaging. The only thing left here in America in many cases is just the packaging, the bubble wrap, uh, the bottles, whatever, and everything else is done overseas. And that includes, yeah. like, Mexico, be meaning overseas or outside the country. Mm -hmm. Yep. And and they, um, I mean, yeah, and, and that, that's that's one of the things that's going to cause everything, you know, the drug prices to go through the roof. I mean, they have an, eth an ethanol tax um, that excluded ethanol from the existing um, biofuel producer tax credit. So they lose the credit, so that, in effect, is a tax. There's a medical device tax beginning in 2013. It imposes a 2.3% excise tax on medical device manufacturers. This will raise taxes on, on patients needing medical devices who will ultimately pay the tax through higher prices. Um, wow. You have... I mean, uh, eight, uh, business regulation costs. Beginning in 2012, Obamacare raises corporate taxes through stricter enforcement because businesses are required to report more information on their business activities. Um, uh, number nine, they uh, reducing medical deductions. In 2013, Obamacare raises the floor on itemized medical deductions from 7.5% of adjusted gross income to 10%, meaning Americans must spend an extra 2.5% on their income before they get a medical deduction, costing about $15 billion from 2013 to 2019. So this is a giant um, uh, money grab by the, uh, it, it doesn't shore up the healthcare system, it actually destroys it. Exactly. It's exactly what it does. And you know what? It's amazing how they label it. You know, you know they, they label it as, as a cost-saving medical, uh, you know, that's, that's supposed to lower it. There's no way it's that cost this can lower. It's a cost-gouging exactly. system. Yeah, it, wow. it, 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 all it's going to do is put everything right through the roof. I mean, it's going to bankrupt the economy. I mean, we're already in the worst economy since the ninth, since the Great Depression. And well, I think that the, put it over the edge. What, what, I want to get your opinion on this, Ray, because you're a financial expert. Uh, yeah. What I see is a timeline, and, I, and again, this is fluid. It's not prophetic, but it's based on 
what I see is the, is the convergence of a whole lot of, of very good information from top experts, a lot of prayer, and a lot of things are going on. The first thing is we're already seeing the meltdown of Europe. Europe is, is panicking now, trying to put together a federation. And the European, uh, the, the central courts in Germany have said that the German government, no matter who is in charge, including Angela Merkel, do not have the authority to set up what's called euro bonds to hold a, the European economy together. So no euro bonds, no Europe. When that collapses, what they want to do is set up a G20 world currency system, and that'll be primarily the U.S. dollar, where we'll lose control of the so-called Fed Reserve, which is acting literally as a receiver of America, the corporation. And, of course, we've talked about this on the show before, that the receivership of America started uh, with Franklin Delano Roosevelt uh, years, many years ago, uh, and that the uh, corporation of America basically being finally destroyed uh, is part of the plan of Obama. It's it's the idea to make America and not even capable of generating crash or credit anymore, and then setting up the banks is setting up all the laws in every country and territory. Uh, this is what's going on in Europe. Uh, the Germans are trying to resist it. In fact, most people aren't aware of this, but East and West Germany were not allowed to re reunite unless they accepted a system of the larger Euro system where Germany would become the, the, uh, the lender to these uh, illegitimate countries that were basically running social programs to the ceiling and not even collecting taxes for the millionaires and billionaires that lived in Greece that would buy islands and have their yachts and do all kinds of things, and they never collected the taxes. It's just crazy. Wow. And uh, that's why Greece is going down the toilet. It was all by design. The Europeans knew this would happen eventually to Europe. And, of course, now these uh, Fitch and uh, Moody's downgrades of the banks we're dealing with a situation where I predict that the massive release of radiation from Japan and their further collapse of their economy will lead to the only creditor nation that was willing to buy European debt out of the market. Europe will, will crash, and I expect a bank holiday as an October surprise by Obama. I think that's what we're heading toward. Well, it certainly seems that way. I mean, it, it's just getting out I of I could be wrong, way. but I mean, that's what I see. I mean... Uh, this is the, the the timeline and the perfect opportunity. If, let's put it this way. If I was malevolently evil and I was going to do something to stay in power no matter what I had to do, including destroying America, this is what i do. And I see Obama is on that timeline uh, to do precisely that, with Satan tapping him on the shoulder and saying, you know what, Obama, you need to trash the economy, and you need to have a bank holiday and then form a world order with you as one of the titular heads. And we're back with Mike Villardi. The website is Mike Villardi, V-I-L-A-R-D-I-E-A dot com. And, of course, the toll-free number is 888-873-8825, 888 One more tax to cover and then maybe some ideas on solutions because most people must be shaking in their boots now if they're listening and taking this seriously if they're not and they think they're just blowing it off. Uh, their financial future is in danger, their physical future is in danger, and the danger of the destruction of America. Uh, you know, the, the the Hunger Games, which was a big movie earlier this year, is not as far off in people's imagination from reality. People just don't see that that possibility could happen down the road if, indeed, we could avoid even a thermonuclear war because the pressing movement by by NATO to support a statement against Syria, luckily short of the idea of military operations, is literally pushing at the possibility of starting a third world war with Russia and China. This is no longer a proxy war with Syria and Iran. And the same thing going on financially. This is a very, very serious situation. And these taxes are the final, if you want to call it the nine-inch nails, driven through the heart of the U.S. economy and the middle class. Yes. So, uh, Mike, what's the next uh, tax you want to cover? Well, the, the last one, the final one, is one of the best things they ever did with those FSL limits, you know, where you, you can use pre-tax dollars, you take it out, and it become you don't pay tax on it. And that's going to be limited in 2014 to 2500 a year, which results effectively in a $13 billion in taxes from 2014 to 2019 because you can't put more than 2500 in your flexible spending account. 
which, you know, w- w- was a great idea because it was used for, like, co-pays, and he had a pocket expenses that you might have. And by putting, put, by electing to take that money and putting it into an FSL account, um, you would not get taxed on it. It would be, it would be non-taxed. So it was a great right. benefit. So that benefit goes up in smoke or is very limited in 2010, as well as, of course, like I'm saying, them raising the itemized deduction limit to 10, to 10% from 7.5. So if you make 200000 a year, through your first $20,000 in medical expenses, you don't get any benefit for. Anything above that, you'll get a benefit for, but not the first 20000 which is a uh. lot of money. That, that's a really big gouge, especially if somebody has a lot of other, uh, oh, you know, insurance or equipment or other material they have to buy that's not covered by the insurance plan. That can really hurt somebody who's already distressed with a serious health condition. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I've taken on a lot of tax cases where people had, a, you know, they got into trouble because they had a serious medical issue. They had to borrow from their 401K. They pull the money out of their 401K. It becomes taxable, and there's a penalty involved. And they can't pay the tax or the penalty, you know. But they had to pay the the hospital for the for the insurance, you know, for the for the, for the procedure. And uh, then the IRS, you know, starts coming onto them and bothering them for the rest of their life to get their money. And um, that's where I come in and I fight them and we end that. I've, I've been very successful in doing that too. So um, I've been able to settle some of those claims for pennies on the dollar. So if there's anybody in that situation that happens to be listening, please call me at the 888-873-8825 number. I'll be happy to help you. Yeah, exactly. Now, the um, let's talk about what solutions. What uh, kind of solutions do you think need to be done in order to actually bring America back on track? Well, and number one, I think this, yeah. Go ahead. This, whole, this whole bill has to be repealed. I mean, that, that's number one. Right. Uh, it, it really, the whole thing needs to be repealed because you're taxing the manufacturers of the drugs, the prescription drugs. You're taxing the makers of the medical devices, which is automatically going to put your, your, your costs through the roof, you know, for the drugs and any medical equipment you might need. And then, of course, you, you're, you're putting a tax on, on a plan. If you, if you have an expensive health care plan, in other words, if you have insurance that's real good, they're going to they're gonna tax you 40%. They're going to say, okay, now we're going to add, we're going to add 40% percent to your costs because they really want to funnel you into a public option where they have total control of you. And one of the things that I read before is the ability to chip you, give you that that little device under your right hand, the mark of the beast device, where they'll be yeah. able to track where you are and 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 then well, they can do anything. I mean I mean just think about that. Uh, when, once that's in people, I mean, if anybody speaks out against the government, five guys can track you any place in the world and, 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 and end your life. Well, not only that, they could actually have in that uh, tracker chip, they could actually have what's called a special lethal code that actually could release a nano uh, toxin that could kill you instantly. Yep. There you go. Makes it Anything. easier. And, and it makes it even easier. Here, uh, let me run through some ideas so people think that there are ideas out there. The reason why these ideas haven't been put forward is because... All of our politicians, all of our government are corrupt Satanists, high-level Masons of various different names, of various different religions, but they're all high-level devil worshippers. Uh, the first thing is we need to strike down the Affordable Care Act. Uh, I've sent some proposals, and I'm sending more to uh, Mike, uh, to, to Mr. Daniel Weber of AMAC, the American uh, uh, Association of Mature Americans, and it's the alternative for AARP, and presenting them to, to senators and congressmen in Washington this coming week. And uh, the first thing we need to do is, number one, we need to get rid of billing codes for uh, any service. All the codes need to go. We need to pay time. If you have a contractor come to your home to do something, you pay a certain amount of time. Uh, secondly, we need to have it so that it's a much more level playing field. You can't pay surgeons 25 or $30 million a year and family doctors to the point or, or pediatricians or internists or physiatrists that are doing rehab so little that they can't actually stay in practice when they have a 30% decrease in fees planned. Uh, you also can't have what are called piecemeal work, where people are seeing more and more people but doing less and less care. Uh, doctors, for example, having a, a doctor doing things that should be done by a nurse or technician is like having a senior engineer turn bolts. It doesn't make sense or weld. Uh, so what you want to do is you want to have a health care system where the doctor gets paid based on the years of experience, training, and research, public service. The uh, the people below him, he would then hire a team under him, and, of course, the local health authorities would determine uh, the catchment population and the number of doctors you need to set up teams, and those teams would then 
charge out for the cost of setting up a facility so you'd have the proper nurses, physical physiatrists, other people, so you'd have a whole team of people, and you'd have a lot less people going, quote, to emergency departments, uh, uh, that they would basically go to an emergency department if it was triage to be a real serious emergency. So when you go to emergency, it's like a trauma center. They're ready to deal with you rather than a cough and a cold and infections. Um, we need to get rid of uh, state licensure and go to what's called federal boards run by doctors and not by the government. So whether it's doctors, chiropractors, physical therapists, massage therapists, laboratories, it should be federal. Uh, and it should be basically under physician specialty groups and not the government. Uh, we need to get over this idea of the electronic medical record that the government wants to know every keystroke of, like that song, uh, you know, every every breath you take, everything you do, you know, from the from Sting. Mm-hmm. I'll be watching mm-hmm. you. Well, they don't need to be watching us at all in their coding and their so-called pathways for healthcare. The Liverpool pathway is a good example of what happens when you get socialized healthcare and you get all these quote, quote uh, protocols. You want to get rid of protocols. You want to have innovative health care with their centers of excellence. People can get referred across the nation to those centers of excellence to deal with very specific, uh, highly technical conditions, and the doctors are specialized, get adequately paid, but not ridiculously paid to do it. Thirdly, when doctors get sicker or older, you get, you've got to deal with liability insurance. Liability insurance drives doctors out of practice. If you're a neurosurgeon, and you have highly, like I talked to the head of neurosurgery back when I was in practice in Colorado, and she was the director of the Department of Neurosurgery, and because of some uh, negative outcomes, which weren't due to the surgery, she's a top surgeon and just had negative outcomes in a couple of cases, her insurance carrier raised her rates so high she couldn't afford to pay the insurance to do those procedures. So as a result, even though she's the head of the department, she could no longer do those procedures because her insurance costs rose to the point where she was actually going negative, so negative financially she couldn't stay in practice if she did those procedures. So that needs to stop. We have the trial lawyers are driving healthcare out of, out of the business. We have to realize that the biggest cost of producing the good in America isn't the cost of energy, it's the cost of healthcare. So that's why cars have been moved to places like Mexico or to Ontario, Canada, because the cost of building a car may be seven or eight thousand dollars more. Uh, secondly, you don't need to split uh, workers' compensation and non-workers' compensation, and we should have the industry should never have their Damocles sword over the doctors' heads. Uh, we need to build infrastructure in this country. We need NAWAPA, North American Water and Power. We need to build new bridges, roads, high-speed rail. We need to have it so that you can come and park your car around the perimeter of a city and come into a nice, clean city, an electric car, high-speed uh, maglev train or whatever, and you have nice, clean cities that have uh, parks and other areas where you walk and get yourself fit. If we take this policy and get out of the international agencies like the United Nations, World Trade Organization, and the bilateral treaties with countries that we won't trade with you if you pollute us like China, and we won't allow industrial espionage, then America will be for Americans, and we'll be a light to the rest of the world of how you treat your people and how you have an economy. Just a few ideas. We have our choice, as I say, as God says, you know, on the right is life and liberty and the pursuit of happiness, and on the left is death and destruction. America, choose today. We'll be back in a moment with Hour 2, Hour 3, coming up with Ray Comfort. You don't want to miss it. Thank you, Michael Velarde. Amazing report. Michael Velarde at 888-873-8825. Find out more. Take action. Take action. 